Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We thank God. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. We thank God for his loving kindness, his tender mercy, his grace, his compassion toward us all. And uh, we delight in him being the joy of our salvation. And uh, we thank and praise God for this opportunity we have uh, to come into your homes to minister uh, the blessed gospel. Amen. I hope you're doing well tonight. Um, I certainly hope and pray, amen, that, uh, 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 that you are, amen, in good spirits, uh, that the Lord, amen, is smiling upon you, amen, that you find uh, great, amen, comfort and support wherever you might be, amen. Despite all that's going on, we will rejoice. In spite of it all, I will rejoice. In spite of it all, I will rejoice. He's an awesome God. In spite of it all, I will rejoice. In spite of it all, I will rejoice. In spite of it all. In spite of it all, we praise him, we celebrate him, he is good, there is nobody like our God. Uh, in the midst of all that we're facing, in the midst of all that's going on, amen, we certainly can say, amen, that he is worthy to be praised and adored, he's worthy to be lifted, amen, uh, for the Lord our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Who wouldn't serve a God like this, who wouldn't serve a God like this, and we thank him, amen, we celebrate him, uh, for he is good. And for his mercy endured forever. Amen. Uh, we praise the Lord again, everybody. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. Again, I hope and pray everybody's in good spirits. Hope and pray, amen, that you are enjoying our midweek Bible class. Uh, do me a favor, hit the share button. Amen. Hit some hearts and some thumbs up. Let me know that you are, amen, can hear me uh, good and well. That, uh, amen, we're coming through good on an audio uh, perspective with you all. Again, I delight. And thank God, amen, for the privilege that we have, amen, to, amen, uh, serve, amen. I thank and praise God for his keeping power. I thank and praise God that we know him, uh, know him to be a friend, know him to be a keeper, know him to be a deliverer. And we praise him. We praise him for his mighty acts. We praise him, amen, for just being so good to us, for being so merciful uh, to us. Amen. And we praise him. Amen. Uh, give me grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity we have again to, amen, study God's word. I certainly hope and pray uh, that you're ready to dive into God's word. Amen. I am excited about tonight's Bible class. Amen. We have uh, just two more lessons as we close out um, the I am pers um, I'm persuaded, uh, I am evidence Bible series. We've been dealing with, amen. Uh, God's expectation for us as believers to be witnesses unto him. I certainly hope that you have found uh, this Bible study to be, amen, uh, uh, a bit, amen, challenging, but also uh, edifying. I certainly hope and pray um, that you have uh, learned some things, gleaned some things, uh, have grown in your own personal, amen, relationship with God. And I hope that uh, you are uh, inspired to continue being the evidence amen, of the tangible gift of God as he uh, desires us for us to be in this last evil day. And I uh, certainly thank and praise God for us that are not being weary in well-doing, the well-doing of studying God's word, prayer, amen, supplication unto him who are certainly continuing uh, this faith journey with us as we grow in God's word. I never want to get to a place spiritually where I think I've maxed out. Um, if there's one thing we should all take to heart is stay green, stay green. Uh, we use that terminology, amen, in uh, ministry uh, because it is likened to uh, just your produce and in particular that, that banana in the store. Uh, when you see that green banana, you know that there's some additional time left, amen. Uh, and when you have some additional time left, uh, you can enjoy it. Uh, you can savor it a bit more. And so that's my expectation for the believer uh, that you would not, amen, uh, get to a point where you feel as if you maxed out. Uh, that you've grown enough, that you there's nothing else you can learn. Uh, my prayer is that you stay green. 
My prayer is that uh, you stay ripe. Uh, my prayer is that, amen, you stay fit for the master's use uh, and that uh, you would avail yourself to keep learning uh, and loving and being challenged and uh, growing, amen, in the grace of God. Stay green, saints. Stay green. Stay green. Stay hungry, amen. Stay usable uh, because the moment, amen, you stop being green, amen, uh, uh, that's when we ultimately uh, decay and when we decay um, there is no use for us and so I'm praying amen that uh, every time we have an opportunity for Bible class every time we have an opportunity for worship impartation we take advantage of it for prayer it's an opportunity for us to stay fresh it's an opportunity for us to learn and grow amen and as we continue to grow amen God will continue to empower us inspire us uh, and give us new lenses amen for life and uh, I don't know about you but uh, relationships can grow stagnant and uh, that's personal relationships uh, whether it be professional or in relationships uh, they can also amen uh, your relationship amen with God can grow stagnant and if your relationship with God grows stagnant amen and you serve a God who is omniscient and uh, omnipotent and you serve a God who is amen uh, all-knowing all-seeing all-powerful amen and and you have a testimony uh, that your relationship is stagnant uh, it must say more about you than it does To God with, Amen. Well, his wisdom is unsearchable, Amen. And certainly, Amen. I pray uh, that you stay hungry and stay on fire and stay driven and motivated to learn something new about Him, uh, something new. Tend to grow, and so Bible study should never become boring to us. It should never become stagnant to us. It should always be a desire to exhaust, Amen. God's word, uh, because where do we? Amen. Learn God. We learn God through his word. And as we learn God through his word, amen, his voice is synonymous with his word. He grows in our relationship. And as we grow in our relationship with him, <clears throat> then we won't hearken to another voice. Uh, we'll find ourselves yielding, amen, to his instruction, yielding to his, amen, plan for our life. And uh, I certainly hope and pray um, that we as believers, amen, grow in that principle uh, that we don't allow uh, the ads of the day to tell us that uh, Bible study is outdated and prayer is outdated. These are things that work. These are things that have uh, has been sustained, amen. Uh, from ages to age, amen, and we know God to be a promise keeper, uh, we know that uh, he inclines his ear, amen, to and the prayers of the righteous, and so we know prayers work, and we know that even while we are speaking, he is yet answering, so amen, I pray again, that if you, in your relationship with God, that We set ourselves up, amen, uh, not to be able to uh, be sensitive to the next season that God is taking us into. And certainly uh, we can find ourselves on a path of destruction uh, when we don't appreciate God's voice. We don't appreciate and uh, uh, we don't appreciate God's instruction. We don't appreciate um, the very thing that he would carve space out of eternity to speak to us. I don't, I don't know if people realize how busy God is. Um, how busy he is. He's got a lot of people to bless. He's got a lot of people to wake up. He's got a lot of people to, to empower. Uh, he's got a lot of people claiming to be his children that want him to answer on the way. Uh, he's got the whole world in his hand, literally. There's a lot of people who are leaning on him, depending on him. Uh, a whole lot of people uh, who are, amen, uh, 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 reliant upon his ability to move. Uh, yet he takes time out of his busy schedule uh, from eternity. Uh, not not doing nothing, uh, but he takes time out of that carved space to speak to us. Uh, whenever he speaks, we should make up in our mind um, that, amen, we want to hear and we want to be blessed and we want to be inspired and empowered, amen, by the things that God would say to us. Amen. So let us go into a word of prayer. Let's pray for all of our saints, friends, and loved ones. Let's pray for our church family. Uh, let's pray for those that we know are impacted by COVID. Let's pray, y'all, for our country. Uh, let's pray for um, those refugees who are 
our border. Let's take a moment to praise God, amen, for our safety and thank God for our safety. But let's also take a time, amen, to pray for those who are trying to find safety and safe haven. All those families down in the borders, amen, from Haiti, those refugees that are trying to come into this country, amen. Some of the scenes that you've seen on TV are disparaging, amen. They need our prayers, our support, and our loving kindness um, that God's uh, hand, amen, would be uh, stayed upon them and so i am praying amen that uh, you would indulge us amen in lifting them up lift up our world leaders lift up our president lift up our congressmen lift up amen our civic leaders those on the front line we're still battling a, a deadly virus um and so all the prayers that we need let's pray for our sick let's pray for our shut-in amen let's believe and touch and agree amen knowing that god is going to do great things in our midst amen for which we are glad so shall we pray father we thank you for your goodness your mercy your compassion your loving kindness your grace your favor we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for uh, allowing us this space uh, to come into, amen, uh, agreement in the line with your word. Oh, God, I pray that you open up our hearts, open up our ears, open up our minds, grant us great sensitivity, grant us great appreciation. Uh, for your word, even as it goes forth tonight. I'm praying in the special name of Jesus, oh God, that uh, you would touch us even right now. I'm praying, oh God, that you would continue to endow us, oh God, with the revelation necessary to live a fruitful and productive to a life for such a time as this. I'm praying, oh God, that your power be released upon us. I'm praying, oh God, that uh, you would open, amen, our hearts, amen, to receive what you are saying to the church for such a time as this. We love you and we thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, uh, let's go to two passages of scripture that we begin each Bible study with. They can be found in the book of John, uh, John chapter number eight. Uh, verses uh, 30 through 32. Amen. As well as 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Amen. While you're getting those, just want to remind everyone of our announcements. Tomorrow night, we're going to be study, or we're going to be, amen, blessed with the word of God by two of our own, Evangelist Green, amen, and Evangelist Linda McMurray Williams. We're going to be sharing the word of God, amen, with the IC, IC uh, International Christian Women's Association. So let's lend our support to them. Uh, if you uh, want to support that, certainly let us know. And we look forward to um, supporting them in that endeavor. Uh, as well as our own evangelist, Karen White, uh, who happens to be the auxiliary, amen, representative for this region. So let's support them. Let's not forget Friday night, amen. We're taking our first road trip, amen. We're going to head down to True Vision Apostolic Church to be with, amen, Pastor Mitchell, amen, and Lady Mitchell in their pastoral installation service. John 8, chapter number 8, John 8, 30 and 32. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Second Timothy chapter number two and verse number fifteen tells us, Study to show thyself approved unto God, worthy that he have not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. And we certainly will keep diving into God's word. Amen. Certainly continuing to be disciples of him by learning, studying, appreciating, eating his word, but most importantly, rightly dividing. Amen. That we would do all these things unto him. Even the quest for the gift of the Holy Ghost, that we would be witnesses unto him. But most importantly, amen, I, uh, our study, our appetite for God's word is so that we would study to be approved unto God. Study thy, to show thyself approved unto God. Another scripture says, study to show thyself or to study uh, and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Um, the word of God is coming to us, amen, again from 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Another interpretation of scripture that we find in Amplified tells us, amen, that the workman is someone who is active in faith. The workman is someone who is has the ability to withstand tests and trials and tribulations. We study God's word for approval because we're going to be facing tests and trials. And at the end of the test and trials, we need to be able to be uh, 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 best unto God. Uh, we study, amen, so that God will be pleased uh, that when the word is tried, when the word comes and we find ourselves in adversities, trials and tribulations, he can find us accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. You can tell someone who does not know their word 
when they get flustered and find themselves in challenge situations and they just butcher scripture. <laughs> uh, when when the word of God does not agree with the situation at the end, you could tell this is someone, a man who is not capable of accurately handling a man, uh, the situation at end because they're going to be tested. And when the faith comes to test the trial, you must have the ability, amen, to stand according on God's word and present ourselves, amen, unto God and have his approval. I mean, uh, and, and, and that happens through studying God's word, developing appetite for, amen, the things that God, amen, uh, allows us to yearn for in his word, amen. All right, we've been studying again, uh, I am evidence uh, taken from the book of Acts chapter number one, verse number eight, scripture says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be my, ye shall be witnesses unto me unto me just like we study to show ourselves approved unto god we are going to be witnesses amen unto god in jerusalem and in judea and samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth and after he spake these words and gave this charge he descended up amen take it up in the cloud and the cloud received him amen out of their sight the last instruction amen that jesus gave here on earth is that when you get this power the holy ghost is going to come upon you you shall be witnesses unto me. And when we translate that word witness in the Greek, it means you shall be evidence. And so certainly the goal of uh, the believer should be to aspire with this gift of the Holy Ghost that has come upon us to be evidence of God working in Jerusalem, amen, in Judea, in Samaria, and the other most parts of the world, which causes us to ask the question, are we evidence, amen? Um, and as we've been studying all throughout this summer what it means to be evidence, I certainly hope and pray that you would understand that the gift of the Holy Ghost comes upon us to empower us. Um, and so, amen, tonight's Bible class, I'm going to take a different approach. We have been kind of dealing with, amen, some of the, I mean, uh, uh, character, uh, witness character clauses or uh, certainly some of the things that are necessary, amen, for believers to, amen, uh, uh, to be, amen, uh, uh, the great witnesses of God. And what are some of the attributes of that? And looking through the law lens, right? Um, but I want to take a different path these last couple of Bible classes as we close this particular lesson out, amen, to deal with the workings of the Holy Ghost and how they are to be expressed and how, amen, evidence of the Holy Ghost, amen, and its operation should yield some fruit. Amen. Uh, and and uh, want to delineate, amen, the, the, the fruits of the Spirit, amen, by dealing with the seed of the Spirit, amen, the Holy Ghost of itself. We know the fruit that it shall bear, amen, but dealing with the seed of that and uh, how it inspired those and how even though the Holy Ghost, even in the Old Testament, was used to encourage individuals to uh, uh, inspire them and to use them, amen, during temporary seasons until it had fully come, amen, Pentecost fully come and rest upon the people and God dwelt on the inside of them. Um, I want to go re revisit some of the things, amen, that we should be evidenced, amen, in doing and fulfilling and working, amen, as it relates to the upbuilding of God's kingdom, as it relates to the empowerment, amen, uh, the empowering mechanism of the Holy Ghost, God on the inside of us and what that charge is. Let's start in the book of Luke chapter number four tonight. Luke chapter number four, amen. We, we see Jesus uh, in Luke 4 immediately in the text through the lens of the Apostle Luke. Amen. Um, we call him the Apostle Luke, although he wasn't one of the disciples. He would go on to be really further known as that because of, amen, his work and relationship. Amen. But, amen, nevertheless, Luke the physician, we'll, we'll leave it there. Amen. I don't want anybody jumping down my throat as it relates to that. We see Jesus, amen, being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. Um, we know God is the spirit. We know Jesus is God. Amen. We know, amen, um, that um, you cannot uh, delineate, you cannot differentiate, amen, uh, God, amen, amen. He is spirit. And so as a result of that, Jesus being God manifested in flesh is full of the Holy Ghost, full of the spirit. And the scripture says that, amen, he returned from Jordan. He was led by the spirit, amen, into the wilderness. Um, and it's interesting that, amen, the Holy Ghost would lead us into places for God to get glory. If there's one thing that you must be evidence of, amen, is a sensitivity of allowing God's direction to lead and guide us. Um, 
let me let me just pause for amen a quick second too amen <laughs> amen to kind of just deal a little bit amen with that with that thought amen uh, um, the Holy Ghost, amen, comes to provide a degree of guidance, amen. It leads us and guides us into all truth and understanding, amen. The scripture admonishes us and tells us that, amen. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let me, let me pivot for a quick second. Let's go to the book of, of Matthew, amen, chapter number four. In verse number one, you get the same, amen. Uh, you're in Luke chapter number four, but you're also in Matthew chapter number four, you get Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right. Uh, the Holy Ghost, again, is leading him in interesting places. So you have comparative uh, uh, chapters, amen, or comparative texts that deal with the leading of the Holy Ghost, sometimes into places of adversity, sometimes in the places of challenges. You cannot be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost not be sensitive to his direction and sometimes that direction is challenge sometimes that that direction amen is seasons of breaking sometimes that direction amen is the wilderness could it be that god navigated through his spirit an entire people who were prosperous and that just let me just teach for a moment um, nothing is new in the lens of god he knows all things we say things like God puts us in challenges to see what will come out of us. My good friend, Pastor Jared Perdue, he hit this dead on the nose the other night. He was preaching, dealing with this concept, and it just stood out to me. We say things like God puts us in the fire to see what will come out of us, as if God is not omniscient, all-knowing. <laughs> God knows what he's going to get out of us, irregardless. The children of Israel... Uh, were to be sent to a place, amen, flowing with milk and honey, amen. Uh, do we think for one moment that the children of Israel were going into a place, amen, that did not, amen, complement what they were? The children of Israel were going to a place of milk and honey that was their home because they were people of milk and honey. I need you to to, to, to to take your to take your your your, your thinking caps and think about this for a quick, a quick second. A place that was, you know, a fantasy in their eyes, was a reality in the eyes of 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 of, of, of the Lord. A place that they sat in the wilderness, they sat literally grappling, uh, 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 making brick with straw. All of the challenges associated with them in Egypt. Do you think for one moment, amen, that the Lord did not know that these people who were in bondage were not people of milk and honey? When you think of the concept of milk and honey, you think of milk and honey literally. No, milk and honey deals with fertilization because you need flowers. It deals with agriculture. Uh, it deals with if you go a step further to have flowers, you must have irrigation. It means you, you must have development. Uh, in order for you to have milk, it must mean you must have workers, which means you must have provision, which means you must have cattle, which means you must have trade and barter, uh, uh, barter mechanisms. You must have the economic commerce to be able to and the ingenuity, amen, to be able to rear, amen, and to govern, amen, uh, uh, the cattle. All right. So God is speaking and he tells them, I'm going to send you to a place of milk and honey. The people fantasized a reality when God was in his mind already knowing that these people were people of milk and honey. They just happened to be in wilderness. They just happened to be in bondage. They just happened to be in Egypt. Sometimes our God's view of us does not match what we find ourselves in. And so we play ourselves down to what we're in. Although God, all knowing, all wise, knows exactly who we are before he places us in a situation. So it's not new to God. Amen. And so when we say things like, you know, he put me here to see if I get something out of him, he already knew what was in us because he knows the end before the beginning. And so these people who were salivating at the idea of milk and honey failed to realize that God had always viewed them as a people worthy of more. They were just challenged in that season. The spirit led them into Egypt. It was no, it was nothing that they did wrong. 
It was because God favored them and God anointed them and God inspired them. Amen. And, and God favored Abram. Amen. To a point that he made covenant with him and he told him, I'm going to uh, deliver your people into a place of milk and honey because my relationship with you is so of, of, of great faith and because I, I, I view your righteousness. Amen. Through your level of faith and commitment to me, I view your people as, as, as something worthy. Uh, of something more worthy even the circumstances they're going to find themselves in and I find it quite interesting how sometimes we downplay how God views us even temporarily and so it's possible that the Holy Spirit amen will lead us sometimes to a place of breaking uh, just like we see here in Matthew 4 it was the Holy Ghost that led Jesus up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil <laughs> uh, yeah but he knew what was in him. And because he knows what's in you, and because you're full of this power, he expects you to come through the wilderness. He expects you to come through the challenge. He expects you to overcome the adversity. Oh God, I'm, I'm, I hope somebody, are you evidence that, amen, you have a milk and honey disposition, although you find yourselves in the hood? This is what, this is what it's all about right now. We are people of the promise who are stuck here in flesh, this mortal. <laughs> ah, and so we're full of the Holy Ghost and empowered and inspired to deal with temptation and to deal with adversity and to deal with challenges. But God's vision and view of us has never changed. He now, instead of leading the children of Israel, amen, to this place by his spirit, he now places us in these same trials and tribulations, but we're full of the Holy Ghost. He's a leader and he's a guider. All right, so Matthew 4 says it. Luke, amen. Let's go back now to Luke 4. I hope you're still following. Uh, let's, let's, let's go a little bit further. Amen. I think Mark had something to say about it as well. Amen. Mark uh, tells us, amen, that amen immediately. Amen. And Mark 1, if you want other references of scripture, amen. In Mark 1 and verse number 12, we hear that immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. We, you know, Mark makes a delineation. Amen. That after Jesus, amen, literally comes up out of the water, amen, and makes a declaration to those followers of John the Baptist that they shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is in the lead, amen, of this spirit again into the wilderness. All right. There to be tempted 40 days. Amen. Uh, other 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 scriptures, amen, that complement this. I hope you've got a pen and paper to understand. Amen. How you are to be evidence of the of of of, of, of the witness of God. Do the gift of the Holy Ghost by being obedient to his leading and his direction. Uh, the book of Acts, Acts chapter number eight and verse number 29. <laughs> Acts eight and 29. We deal with even Philip. You remember Philip and the Ethiopian the angel of the Lord in verse number 29 spake to uh, spake unto Philip saying arise go down south where uh, go uh, go south where to go down south amen uh, uh, from uh, Jerusalem to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Gaza which is the desert and he arose and he went um, and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of her treasure, had come to Jerusalem, amen, uh, for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, uh, uh, reading or read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit, verse number 29, said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot, to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him uh, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I accept uh, some man should guide me, and he desired Philip that he would come, uh, that he would come up and sit with him. Um, verse number thirty-two says, "The place of the scripture uh, which he read was this, and he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, Amen, like a lamb dumb before his uh, shear. So he opened not his mouth, Amen. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken uh, from the earth." And the eunuch answered Philip and says, I pray thee of whom speakest thou, or speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus because of his sensitivity of being led and being directed as the Holy Ghost sent. 
And so him being led of the Holy Ghost, amen, to get in his chariot and to, and to amen, and, and to go as the Lord commissioned, he finds himself amongst the unit of great authority of the, the Ethiopians. And the scripture says that as a result of his obedience and sensitivity to leading and drawing, amen, there of the Holy Ghost, the byproduct of his obedience is that he had an opportunity to share the scripture and share the knowledge and the message of Jesus Christ. And so the question we have to ask ourselves, are we evidence of his leading and his guidance and his direction that compels us to be placed in opportunities to effectively witness and to evangelize to other people? We know those who are the Holy Ghost because they are people who are driven. I got a question to ask you. Are you evidence, amen, that God is leading you and that you are driven by his spirit? That's the that's that's what makes us approved unto God. That's what makes us. Amen. He's compelled. Philip was so compelled. Amen. Of the Lord to take him at his word. He's driven by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then the word was placed in his spirit. Amen. To be able to preach and to effectively pick up the scripture right where this eunuch left off and declare. Amen. <laughs> amen. And at the same scripture, but preach Jesus and preach. Amen. Amen. His baptism. Amen. While they were on their way, the scripture says, and, and they went on their way, there came unto certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What thou, what doeth hinder me <laughs> to be baptized? <laughs> Philip said, If thou believest all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered, It says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went what both down to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And what happened? We go a little bit further. He says, and when they were uh, come up out of the water, the spirit, the Holy Ghost, right? The spirit of the Lord caught away Philip uh, and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. My God. So again, there is a man, uh, 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 great. Uh, there's so much to unlock in this. I mean, his being led of God empowered him to be evidence that obedience, amen, can draw people to Christ Jesus. And so his obedience put him in the path of someone who could receive the gospel. His obedience allowed him, amen, to be driven to the point, amen, that, amen, the gospel is preached to the point that it is compelled for someone to want to stop and believe and be baptized. And as a result of it, amen, the scripture says that not only, amen, baptism takes place, but the spirit of the Lord, amen, catches up Philip. <laughs> the eunuch saw in the morning when his way rejoicing, amen. But I, I still have to say that, that, amen. Our evidence, amen, of being Holy Ghost filled believers, amen, is a direct result of our ability to be led and directed of God. Amen. Are you driven? Are you driven? Are you motivated and inspired by God to keep pushing? Amen. To keep, amen, amen, uh, uh, chasing him with all reckless abandon. Amen. To keep chasing and pursuing God's will and having me sensitive to God's will that it leads and guides you and places you in the path of people to receive, amen, this great gift of salvation. Amen. So, amen. As we go a bit further, let's go back to the book of Luke chapter before. Let's go back to Luke 4. We found, amen, that amen it was the leading of the holy ghost that led jesus himself into the spirit of wilderness amen, or i'm sorry yeah uh, that led him into the wilderness allowed him to be tempted amen but the scripture tells us that it is the spirit of god that empowers amen jesus say it is written that man shall not live by bread alone as as uh, the devil attempts to uh, to tempt him amen by offering him bread amen it is the spirit that rises up within jesus that empowers him to overcome the temptation Amen. His leading and his guidance, amen, the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost, amen, brought him into a place where the enemy thought he could get the best of him. He thought, the enemy thought he would be driven to a place or to a point, amen, where he didn't have the stamina to endure. But that same Holy Ghost that led and drove even Jesus into a place, amen, of temptation, into a place of wilderness, is the same Holy Ghost that gave him the boldness to stand up and overcome. Are you evidence that when you are driven to places of breaking, when you're driven to places of adversity, when you're driven to places, amen, of temptation, that the Holy Ghost rises up and allows uh, inside, on the inside of you and does not allow you to compromise? Are you evidence that even in the face of an opportunity to take the B road or to be take the B side or or to take the easy way out, the Holy Ghost compels you to hold your peace because the Holy Ghost strengthens you to overcome? Are you evidence of that? 
If we go further, though, amen, it is the Holy Ghost who serves Jesus again, amen, uh, 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 in a different fashion that I want to kind of deal with. Let's go down to verse number 14. The scripture tells us in the book of Luke, chapter number 4, verse number 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost, into Galilee. That's what the scripture says, right? Uh, and there went out fame of him throughout through all the regions, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. The scripture tells us that Jesus, amen, returns to his assignment with power. If there's one thing that is, amen, uh, uh, the, the fundamental of the Holy Ghost is that it does empower us. And so the scripture says that Jesus returns in the power of the Holy Ghost into Galilee. Let's go a bit further. Let's go down to verse number 16. Uh, we're in Luke, amen, 4 and 16. He came to Nazareth. The scripture says uh, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went up to the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up to read. Uh, he stood up, uh, stood up uh, for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. All right, Isaiah again, y'all. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. All right, speaking about the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The Holy Ghost leads and guides him. It gives him power. It empowers him. And in the midst of his fame arising, the gift of the Holy Ghost brings a degree of accountability. Because if there's one thing, amen, that we must be evidence of as God empowers us is, a, is, amen, are we evidence of accountability? This is what he says. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's very intentional. He's telling me to preach the gospel to the broken. Now, there are some who would look at this and say he's preaching to an economic class. No, I'm, I, I believe he is speaking to those who are deprived. We look at poor and rich from, a, from an economic commerce perspective. Do you know that you could have billions of dollars and still be poor? Let me just intellectualize with you for a moment. Do you know that you can have everything tangibly? And not have anything spiritually. There are some people out there, literally right now, who have more money in their bank account. There are some people. I was watching. I was reading an article today, just random, about the disparities between the WNBA basketball players and what they make, and the NBA basketball players, and how LeBron James makes in in, in one season sometimes what an entire WNBA a man uh, teams combine what their salaries are. I was just reading those disparities, and and so I'd say that that you know there is great emphasis on the accumulation of wealth. There is a lot of great emphasis on what people have, and if you thought for one moment, Amen, that yeah, we all certainly need to we all need to survive. Certainly, if somebody handed me some money, I wouldn't you know <laughs> wouldn't say no necessarily, right? But there are some people who can have everything and not have fulfillment. Because the same passion that these young ladies play with and give their all for and they make a man what sometimes these guys in the NBA don't, you know, they, they make their entire salary in one quarter, amen, or in, in a couple ball games where the person makes for an entire season. But when it comes down to love and to come down to passion, you can't equate the two. There are some people who have a lot of things materialistically. However, a man, they're, they're left with a lack of fulfillment. They're lack with the they're left with the with the hole that's on the inside of them, and this certainly is what I believe Jesus is preaching about when he says this. The spirit of the Lord is up, up, is uh, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me. Again, that word anointed means Amen to be broken, the breaking. Amen. It means to be set apart, a, a consecrated. But when we think of anointing, we often refer to the oil of the anointing of the oil, which is the crushing. Right. That means Jesus literally has to become broken, a base. Right. He's been anointed. 
To be anointed again means to pour with oil, to be consecrated, to be set apart. But we forget how a person is anointed is anointed through oil, through crushing. He literally has to become a base. He literally has what the scripture tells us in the verses ahead of it. All the popularity and notoriety has gone out about who he is. He comes back with the spirit of the Lord and he says, I've been anointed to be crushed. I've been anointed, amen, to be abased. I've been anointed, all right? This is what happens. He says to preach the gospel to the poor. He's strategic. I'm not speaking to an economic status of people. I'm speaking to a people who are lacking. When, you, when someone is poor, they're lacking. There, isn't it what we use sometimes in English, in the English uh, 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 lexicon? Amen. Oh, poor Chiron. He had a bad day. He's lacking joy. Oh, poor this such and such. He just, you know, uh, she just need a man. You know, oh, you know, we say poor this or, or or poor that. Amen. Sometimes when we're talking about poor, we're talking about a person who can have a whole bunch of stuff but lack the, the, the very essence of the thing that's necessary. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've been empowered by the gift of the Holy Ghost to be broken and to be crushed. Amen. So that I may preach, proclaim the gospel to the poor. To those who are without, to those who may have fortunes, amen, sit, may have IRAs, uh, may have uh, stocks and bonds and equity, and, but they're still missing. They're still bankrupt. They're still devoid of something. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to go to those who are broken, amen. And he says to do what? He says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. This is what he's defining as poor. You can be, amen, a person with a whole lot of money, amen, and still be brokenhearted. I've come to preach to you. All right. He says, amen, you could be a person, amen, who has a, a great, amen, esteem and complex in the eyes of people. But I've come to preach deliverance, amen, to those who are bound. You can have everything and still be bound. You can be free and still bound. Which means when you when you're looking at that, the captives, you're looking to uh, you're thinking, uh, you're speaking to that of those who are in bondage, and sometimes freedom can very well be your bondage. Hello, somebody. The problem with some of us is we're too free. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Here in America, we got rights. We have equal opportunities. Some people, Amen. I think sometimes it's that prism of freedom that even sometimes people bring into the body of Christ, and so you feel is it because you have rights, Amen. Uh, in the United States of America, that those same rights equate to God's hierarchy and God's infrastructure in His church. It's not the truth. All right, it's just not the case. He says, "I've come to preach deliverance to those who are bound." I'm not necessarily speaking, amen, you can be just as free as you want to be, amen, answer to no one, and that can, in that sense and lack of accountability, amen, leads you to a place that although you're free, you're very much in bondage. Somebody can testify that some of the worst, amen, feelings in my life is that I had too much freedom, I had too much free time on my hand. That's why I need deliverance. I'm too free. <laughs> I've got too much of this. I got too much. I got too much opinion. I got too much, amen, access to resources. I got too many channels. Oh, come on. Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me. Part of the problem is we have way too many channels. We have way too many options. We have way too many. Amen. I, 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 know, I, I, know, I, I know I'm telling the truth tonight. He says, I've come to preach to those, to preach deliverance, amen, to the captives, all right? Uh, to those who are broken, amen, to those who may be in freedom but need deliverance. He says, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, right, to those, amen, again, you can be uh, able to see, uh, <laughs> you know, and still be blind to the power of his glory, to set at liberty them that are bruised, injured, those who are wounded, that need freedom from those, from those, amen, scars, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, again, all of these attributes are things that bring about, amen, a new revelation of what the anointing, amen, of the Holy Ghost is supposed to come. The power is released upon Jesus, amen, for him to be crushed, for him to inspire and to preach, and for him literally in his crushing, amen, to be made a base, amen, so that he may be open, amen, to teaching and to fulfilling his entire purpose. He would go on to say later in his word, amen, what the, 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 the well don't need a physician. He understood his assignment. Even I've come strategically, amen. And so the Holy Ghost comes to anoint. 
to, to anoint us. It falls upon us to anoint us. It comes upon us to strengthen us. It comes upon us to give us direction. And it comes upon us, amen, to amen, empower us and to equip us, amen, to do the work that's necessary for us for such a time as this. All right? And so when we speak of the exploits of the Holy Ghost and what it is that we're supposed to be doing with the Holy Ghost, amen, uh, uh, the gift, amen, that God has placed upon us, amen, it should be with a new sense of, amen, passion. It should be, amen, understanding that the Holy Ghost comes, amen, to provide a degree of help. It comes to help us be strengthened and to endure specifically in times of adversity. All right. Uh, because even though Jesus has this power, he still has to go into unusual places to perform as God inspires him. It's one thing to be empowered and inspired. It's another thing to have this great power amen, and to be placed into the pickles of life, to be placed into the crushing and the threshing floors of life. And this is the things that we have to remain amen, evidentiary of. These are the things that we certainly have to maintain our posture in. This is this is where in my evidence, this is where really where it comes into. When God gives you this power, he makes your base, he crushes you to preach, amen, to people, amen, uh, you know, of all circles of life and to deliver the word of God and to, amen, uh, go forth in this great power and this great anointing, amen, to preach the acceptable year, to set at liberty, amen, to, to bring recovery, amen, but to have to do it in hostile environments. This is where we rely on the help of the Holy Ghost uh, to help us overcome. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number three. Right? Actually, even before we go to Ephesians, before we go to Ephesians three, let's go to Galatians five. All right? Because we were dealing with a man temptation. And this is certainly how Amen. Jesus himself is even able to overcome the temptations. Let's before we go to Ephesians, amen. Let's go to the book of Galatians, chapter number five. All right. Ephesians, amen. Uh, we'll go back to Ephesians three, but Galatians five and verse number 16 tells us this. All right. He says this. I say then. He's speaking to the Galatians. He's speaking again. We talked about this Sunday about a man, a church need to be reminded of the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and the work of Jesus Christ that comes to let them walk in freedom. He says above them, he says, be careful that you bite and, and if, he says, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you're not consumed of one another. If you if you go about attacking one another, make sure that you are not eating of your own things. And if, as a result of it, uh, consuming yourselves, amen, with the very thing, amen, that you're despising. And so he goes on to say this. He says, this I say, Galatians 5 and 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How was Jesus able to overcome those seasons of temptation? How was he able to overcome the burdens and tribulations when it seemed as if he was led of the spirit into these places of wilderness by allowing the Holy Ghost to empower them, by allowing the Holy Ghost to overwhelm him to the point that he had victory in these places. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit that ye not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, for the flesh, for the flesh lusted after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, right, allow God to lead you, allow God to guide you, ye are not under the law. And so the important thing for us to understand is that God provides us opportunities for us to overcome temptation. He allows us opportunity to overcome the very environments that were designed, amen, strategically to allow God's power to be activated on the inside of us. He leads us to places of temptation. He leads us to places of wilderness to activate the power that is in us. Are you evidence that that power is being activated when you find yourself in temptation? When you find yourself in temptation, the Holy Ghost should awaken on the inside of you with the strength to empower you that you can overcome that. Jesus had to be led to the wilderness and put at the doorstep of temptation to allow the devil himself to even know that although I am at all points tempted in my flesh, 
because God's spirit is on the inside of me and I'm full of the Holy Ghost, I have the power to overcome it. Are you evidence? Are you evidence that when you find yourself literally in places, amen, of great hardship and places of great temptation, that the Holy Ghost empowers you and equips you to faithfully overcome, to faithfully get through it, to faithfully come through your wilderness experiences, amen? This is what, amen, it means to be evidence. Do we see it? Do we always see every time you come up against some adversity, you always crumbling? You always leaving the church. You always second guessing. See, I knew I shouldn't have done this. Whenever you come to the face of temptation, when it comes to honor God, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you will awaken to say, ah, that which is on the inside of me, amen, will help me overcome this valley. It will help me overcome this temptation. The power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you has to be awakened. Are you evidence of that? That you and God are prevailing even in seasons when it seems that the enemy is strategic in his attacks and is strategic, amen, in, 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 in his battle and strategic, amen, in trying to pull you down and strategic in trying to tempt you and strategic in trying to get you off the course, amen. Are you allowing the gift of the Holy Ghost to come on the inside of you to give you that power and boldness to overcome? Hallelujah. Are you evidence? I have to be evidence. I have to be evidence, which means God literally has to bring me, amen, into seasons. He literally has to bring me into arenas. He literally brings me into places to try and to test that which is on the inside of me. <laughs> That's what we talked about. Study to show thyself approved unto God, right? That's why we're studying because, again, we're, 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 we, we, are, we are set up and strategically designed to operate in extremities, places us in the pressure cooker of life because he knows what's on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost is stronger than any temptation. The Holy Ghost is stronger than any vice. Come on, somebody talk to me. The Holy Ghost is stronger than any addiction. The Holy Ghost has the power to overcome the very chains of the enemy. He says, if you walk in this spirit, if you walk in this grace, if you walk in this power, if you walk inspired of me, he says, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lure of the temptation by walking in the spirit and owning that experience and, and owning this power. Are you evidence? Do you own the Holy Ghost? <laughs> and I'm not talking about that. No, I'm not talking about do you own it. I'm talking about do you, you know, I'm talking about ownership. Like, do you, I mean, I got the Holy Ghost. Do you own it? Do you even own that you have this power? Or are when it comes to situations, amen, you allow your flesh to creep in and to, to win the day? You got to own it. I've got the Holy Ghost. I'm no better than this. I know I got to change my thinking. I know I can overcome this. I know I'm not going to let my eyes, amen, make a decision for me. God placed me in this strategic situation because he knows what's in me. Because nothing escapes God. I'm a, I am a child of God. I am a child, amen, of the promise. I'm a child of milk and honey. I just so happen to be in Egypt temporarily, but I'm here to overcome Egypt. God will place me right there because the gift that he's given us on the inside of the power on the inside of me is strong enough to overcome these addictions. It's strong enough to overcome, amen, these seasons where I'm on edge. It's strong enough to help me get through it. Anybody got the real thing out there? Anybody got the real thing out there? Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, amen, this is, a, this, is, this is a word tonight, whether you choose to embrace it or not, amen, this is a word I believe, certainly, amen, that's going to inspire us and empower us to check ourselves. Are you evidence of that? That with the temptation... He will make a way of escape because his power won't allow me to surrender. His power won't let me, amen, temporarily, amen, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, all this. I'm just turning off the Holy Ghost for quick. You can't turn it off. When the temptation is there, that's when it gets its strongest. When I'm in situations where I feel like I'm being got darts thrown all at me, that's when the Holy Ghost empowers me and emboldens me and inspires me to withstand. Are you evidence that when it gets difficult, your confidence allows you to keep walking in the spirit? Your confidence own that you got the Holy Ghost. Somebody even said, right now, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. And I am evidence unto God that he can trust me even when he places me in situations. Amen. Because he knows I'm going to give him glory in the situation. He knows I'm not going to let the best, the best of the situation overwhelm me to knock me off course. 
Oh, baby, this is what he comes to do. All right, uh, and he does that by bringing conviction. Oh, my Lord, I'm just, flow with me. First Thessalonians 1 and 5, <laughs> real quick. First, First Thessalonians 1 and 5 tells us, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. The gospel that is being preached, the gospel that we possess, amen, is not just in word only. It's in deed, it's in power, it's in demonstrations in the Holy Ghost. In much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we are among you for your sake, and ye became followers of us of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, and what? With the joy of the Holy Ghost. Are you evidence of having joy of the Holy Ghost even when you get bad news, even when you find yourself bombarded, even when you find yourself literally in the frails and in the thicket, in the thicket, amen, uh, of ministry, in the thicket of life. Do you have that testimony? This power didn't, this, this is not just a pastor saying something. No, this gift that God places on the inside of you has to become, it has to become active. It's not word only, but it's also in power. It is the Holy Ghost. Jesus, <laughs> it brings a degree of conviction. He says, and as ye became followers of us and of the Lord Jesus Christ, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost, amen, we're going to be placed in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the world. Those uttermost parts of the world are platforms for the Holy Ghost as evidenced in you to be maximized. Oh, help us tonight, God. He places us in these trials and situations, amen, that we would be strengthened and that we would, be in, and that we would gain a mechanism of endurance through the trials and tribulations. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter number three. I hope this is blessing somebody tonight. This is why you have it. You don't have it for it to be dormant. You don't have it for it to be optional. You don't have the Holy Ghost just so that you can parade around in all white on Pentecost Sunday. You don't just have the Holy Ghost so every now and then when a worship song comes over, you get a tongue. No, you don't have the Holy Ghost. We are being placed strategically, amen, in God's assigned places for our life. Samaria, Judea, Jerusalem, the uttermost parts of the world, Crenshaw. He's placed us in Long Beach. He's placed us in, amen, Wildemar. He's placed us, amen. Uh, Seattle, Washington, you call out where you are, St. Louis, you, he's placed us strategically in the utmost parts of the world, amen, that when we endure temptation, the glory of God will be maximized and emboldened, and that certainly the glory of God will continue, amen, to expand as they see our evidence of us persevering and holding on and coming through and pushing through. I question if you have the Holy Ghost, if when every time you come to an area of your walk with Christ and your season of God being faithful becomes optional are you evidence that even when life pulls from me I'll still be faithful to God in my giving in my praying in my fasting in my love for other people in my accountability to God's word amen this is what this is the time in which we're living when we're on full display because we know everybody's looking now but the church with all that's going on in this pandemic with all that's going on in world affairs they're looking for light and God is saying, I've placed you in some strategic places that you'll be evidence unto me, but that you'll be evidence of this power and the strength, even in the midst of adversity. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number three. Amen. As we talk to you, amen, and close out tonight in Ephesians three. And and, and trust me, y'all, I, I, there are so many pages of notes. There is so much that goes into providing a, a reasonable Bible study that I'll never be fully able to exhaust what I really want you out of this. But at the same time, I don't want to bore your patience with, amen, uh, this exhaustive. But amen, as the Apostle Paul is writing to us in the book of Ephesians, he's talking to us, amen, a prisoner. He tells he's a prisoner and for Jesus Christ of the Gentiles. If he, um, if he have heard of the dispensation of grace, amen, which is the word, amen, uh, um, that deals with, the, uh, or this is the dispensation in which we're living in now, dispensation of grace, uh, which has given me to you a uh, word, amen, how that by revelation he may uh, uh, have made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He goes on to talk about the Gentiles now being 
fellow heirs and partakers of the gospel, how we are to embrace grace. I love that in verse number seven, where he says, whereof I was made a minister. He talks about being of that body of the promise of Christ. And as a result of it, amen, walking in accordance with the grace of grace that was given upon me uh, to effectually work in his power. Amen. But what I love is his appeal. As he writes, he begins his appeal down in verse number 14. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the family in heaven and earth is made is named. He says that you, that he would grant you. He's speaking to us, all right? He's speaking to us, all right? Church, church Ephesus, but he's also speaking to us Gentiles. He says that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man. Ah, that Christ may dwell in your hearts what by faith being rooted and grounded in love may be, uh, I'm sorry, let me read that again. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints that uh, what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, amen, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. Look at this Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost power comes to strengthen us in our inner man that God may dwell in our hearts by faith. We have to have the faith to believe he dwells in our heart. That in the gift of the Holy Ghost comes a comprehension. Are you evidence that you understand even what's going on with you? <laughs> that you be able to comprehend, amen, with all the saints that have been blessed with this Holy Ghost, the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and the knowledge of his love, amen, to know the love of Christ, amen, amen, which passes all knowledge, which passes all subject matter, amen, is embodied of us in the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, right? The power to understand these things, right? As demonstrated by the intimacy and by the knowledge of his love. He says that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. When you get the Holy Ghost, you get all of God. You get the fullness of God on the inside of you. You get the fullness of his will, his discernment, his power, his strength, his blessings. Who wouldn't want this gift? Who wouldn't want this power on the inside of you? And he comes to bring strength and endurance in trials and tribulations. If you, back, if you go back up, he says that he may strengthen, in verse number 16, back up, he says, uh, uh, according to the riches of his glory, there's a richness that brews with his power and his spirit, amen, that strengthens your inner man. And in being strengthened in your inner man, amen, comes, amen, the flood of overwhelmingness to your heart as demonstrated by you being rooted and grounded in his love and having the knowledge and understanding of his love because the fullness of Christ, the fullness of God is embodied with his spirit on the inside of you. God is the spirit. Amen. God is the Holy Ghost. And when God gets on the inside of you and dwells on the inside of you, amen, you have his fullness. Are we evidence of being full of God? Or are we full of Pick whatever you want to put there. Are we evidence of that fullness? That fullness that allows us to love, even when it's tough. That allows us to press, even when it's challenging. To allow, to allow us to go further, even when we're struggling. This is the very temptation that we see Jesus in. And the fullness and the power of the Holy Ghost stood up to overcome it. Again, we've got to stop treating God as if he's not aware of what we're made of. <laughs> uh, he placed the children of Israel, people who were milk and honey people, in Egypt. And his expectation of them never changed. These are still milk and honey people. Yeah, some are stubborn and have wandered and some can't possess the full promise. But my covenant with Abram my covenant with Abraham, amen, sees milk and the honey, sees residual income streams, sees, sees a great nation, a great military force, sees the apple of my eye due to the act of one. And I hear God saying that those of us who are in covenant with God, are we evidence of the fullness of God, of God's favor? Because he knows who we are. And so he places us strategically some places in life, not because he wants to see what we'll do. He knows what we're going to do. 
because you got God on all of God on the inside of you. The question is, is are we evidence unto him? Are we holding up our bargain? He knows what's in us. He knows our capability. He designed us, he manufactured us, and he lives on the inside of us to strengthen us in those areas when we are weak. I really believe Jesus was at all points tempted, but without sin. I believe that. I believe that as human as I am and as frail as I am and as, you know, tempted as I am sometimes and in, in, in with decisions and stuff like that. And I believe that he had every time he got to the point of it. There was no sin because he allowed the spirit of the Holy Ghost and God on the inside of him. Amen. The Holy Ghost, amen, to amen, to rise on the inside. That power on the inside helped him overcome. And you have that same power. Are you evidence of that? Are you evidence? Are you evidence? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And with that, he, he gives us the ability to keep growing in the faith. I'll leave you with this tonight. Amen. First Peter. Chapter number one and verse number two says that through the sanctification of the Holy Ghost unto obedience in the spring of the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I know it's a lot. I, I, I know it's a lot to process, but we are the elect. We are the elect, um, the elect of God. We are chosen of God. By the foreknowledge of God, the Father. Again, I just I bring that all full circle. He knows nothing catches him by the surprise, saints. I just needed to to just add a little icing on the take on, on, on the cake as it relates to <laughs> this Bible class. We were chosen, hand selected of God, to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Holy Ghost, unto obedience and to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing catches God by surprise. Are you evidence of that? Are you, do you own the gift of the Holy Ghost? I own it. I own it. I own it. And that sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ deals with our own personal, amen, ability to, to be nailed to that cross and to keep hanging on. I love how the, the, the Sunday messages and the Bible classes interlink, amen. But we were hand selected in the foreknowledge of God to be sanctified of the Holy Ghost to continue to be obedient just as Christ was his obedience to the cross is my same obligation to pick up that cross and to follow after him and he sanctifies us by the gift of the Holy Ghost through our obedience by being nailed by continuing to press by continuing to keep going further uh, by continuing amen to keep allowing God to be maximized and enlarged in every area and every facet of our life are you evidence of this? Are you evidence of this? I am evidence. I'm evidence. The Holy Ghost comes to help us grow into holiness. It helps us to grow into that act of obedience by encouraging us and by strengthening us, even when we're in the pressure cookers of life and at our most extreme situation. Are you evidence of that? This is the Holy Ghost that talks about or the, the Holy Ghost that deals with our decision making. The times of adversity, we don't faint in the moment. Ah, the Holy Ghost that comes to bring that fruit that gives us wisdom in our decision making. Amen. That we go to Christ, amen, and that he would give us the spirit of wisdom. Ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you for that wisdom. Thank you for that knowledge. Thank you for that insight. Thank you for, amen, certainly, amen, this, this, amen, rich reward that we have of Christ that dwells on the inside of us. Amen. And I, I'm praying, amen, for each and every one of us that we will continue to remain to be evidence. Stay the course, saints. Amen. Be evidence. Amen. Uh, that that when uh, looked upon, amen, in your pressure cooker situations, you'll be steadfast, immovable. Amen. Always abounding. Amen. In the work of the Lord. Amen. That you would continue to hold. Amen. To the promises of God. That you would continue to endure. Amen. Are you evidence of that? Are you evidence of that? Are you evidence? Amen. Uh, that in the midst of all that, amen, you're facing, amen, when you find, amen, yourself at the, at the, at, at the, at the apex, amen, of, 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 of challenge, amen, that you can endure, that you can go on, that God gets your best, 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah, that he gets your best. He gets your best. He doesn't get your second. He gets your best. Amen. I certainly hope again that tonight's Bible class, amen, was a blessing. Amen to each and every one of you. Amen. Again, if you're looking for more direction as it relates to how God operates, amen, with this gift and how it is concerning even your tests and trials. I, we talked about this last week uh, real quickly, but over in the book of Isaiah chapter number 11, verses 1 through 5. Amen. Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost shall rest upon him. This is the proclamation of, amen, Jesus coming. Spirit of the, of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Spirit of counsel and might. Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him quick of understanding and the fear of the Lord. He shall judge not by the sight of eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. <laughs> and reprove the equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with his lips shall he slay the wicked and righteousness shall be girdled of his loins and faithfulness uh, girdle of his reins and so again if you're ever looking for amen quantifiable things that we should be expecting of the holy ghost and prayers that we should be praying as god fills us and as we walk in the power of the holy ghost it's lord amen allow your spirit to rest upon me give me the spirit of wisdom and understanding I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a valley of temptation. I'm in a valley of, of, of difficulty. And in this period that I'm living in, Lord, give me your spirit of wisdom and understanding. This is what happens when Jesus literally was tempted. He was able to identify his adversary and the temptation. Although he was led to the wilderness, the spirit of wisdom and understanding came upon him. In the spirit, amen, uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost comes that it would be of counsel and of might to us. To be strong, we got to be praying, Lord, with this Holy Ghost, give me counsel and give me might, give me strength, give me knowledge, give me the fear of the Lord. That's what the Holy Ghost comes to do, to remind us of his statutes, to remind us, amen, of uh, our need to be holy unto God and to walk in that fear and reverence of the, of the Lord. He's on the inside of us, amen. And most importantly, that we'd be quick of understanding in the fear of the Lord, amen, and not judge things with our eyes. Not to see this as bread to eat, no, for us to discern what the challenge is in front of us. Neither reprove the hearing of the ears, not to have itching ears in this day, but to reprove even the things that are being taught to us in Bible class. And with righteousness shall we judge those who are poor. Again, not necessarily economic skills, but judging those, amen, who are without, right? Um, so I certainly hope that you'll go back and revisit again Isaiah chapter number one through verse number five. You want to know how it is that Christ was able to, amen, operate, amen, in the time in which he was here on earth, just 33 years. He did it, amen, by, amen, uh, allowing the spirit of God on the inside to overwhelm him, amen, and that is what we've been called to do. Are we evidence of that? Are we walking in that same grace, walking in that same purpose? We love you with the love of Christ Jesus. I certainly hope again and pray that you'll make plans to be with us tomorrow night. Amen. The Christian International Women's Auxiliary. Amen. Evangelist Karen White. Evangelist Shirley Green. Evangelist McMurray Williams. We're going to be praying for them. We're praying even now that God would strengthen them and give them the words. Amen. I'm praying that you will be with us. Come on. Get on that bus with us. And let's take the road trip down to Long Beach. Amen. And uh, need some. I need some young people to come with me. Amen. Uh, let's go show some support to those young people that are with. Amen. That church. Church. Amen. Down in Long Beach. Amen. True vision. Amen. I'm a young person, so I'm coming. I might, you know, bring Kai and Cameron with me. Amen. Come on down. And get on the bus with me. I love bus trips anyway. Um, but I'm praying. Uh, that you'll be with us there. Remember, our food bank ministry is going to be open this Saturday. If you know of anybody who is in need, send them over to us. We thank God for Sister Geneva. I really thank God for her. I thank God for Sister Sheila House. Thank God for uh, uh, Sister Donna Miller, y'all. Shout out to Sister Donna Miller. I love me some Sister Donna Miller. Amen. Faithful down through the years. Ain't nobody say nothing about that lady. Amen. Um, but I praise and thank and praise God for her, um, her faithfulness down through the years. Amen. Uh, uh, this thank and praise God for those who roll up their sleeves. You know who you are. Uh, you've worked down through the years and supported. Amen. That endeavor. Amen. Those who have worked past years, those who have worked now, we thank God for you all. Amen. Who have helped to continue to be a blessing to uh, the kingdom of God here at Bethesda Temple Church. And I pray um, that you'll make plans to be with us Saturday as we uh, feed those who need it. Amen. We still are in a food insecurity. Amen. Day. And I'm praying that you will all will join us. Amen. Uh, by sharing the news of our food bank with those who may be in need of it and joining us from 9 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. this Saturday. Amen. At the Bethesda House. 
Amen. Come by and be blessed. Amen. With that. Lots of great food. Lots of great things that you can. Amen. Be blessed with. Certainly don't let your pride get in the way. Amen. And so I'm praying, amen, that you'll make plans to be with us in that endeavor. Amen. And we look forward again for you all joining us in the month of October. We have three, amen, worship experiences in October. October the 3rd, October the 17th, October the 24th. You do not want to miss that. Amen. Welcome to October Bethes, all right? Not October Fest, October Bethes. Amen. We're looking forward to awesome time of ministry and revival with our in-house ministers. Amen. In the month of October, you're going to be hearing for their voices. Amen. We have something lined up for the young people into the month. Amen. We've got a music ministry extravaganza that you are going to not want to miss. Amen. We've got some exciting things that are coming up and I'm planning that you, I'm hoping and praying that you will make plans to be with us. Amen. Again, that's October the 3rd, the 17th, and the 24th. I pray that you'll make plans to be with us in person for those worship experiences. Amen. As well as our other online worship experiences y'all hey listen amen we are certainly in the last couple of days amen and so i am certainly aware of all that's going on but i want to admonish you as amen your leader here amen if you have not been amen uh covet tested get covet tested amen if you haven't gotten the vaccination amen talk to your medical professional but i highly encourage you to get vaccinated amen we amen our people of faith amen and um, i believe that you have to have just as much faith amen to take a pill as you would the um, um, um the the vaccine so i'm making a personal appeal to you all it's very near and dear to me amen um, um you know, uh, people I love and I'm close with, amen, have been impacted by this. And so I'm encouraging everybody, amen, that can. I mean, y'all going to be mad at me, be mad at me. I mean, I, you know, um, it takes faith on either side of the, of the spectrum. Um, if you're not going to be vaccinated, please use wisdom. Amen. I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see anybody lost. Amen. I just would encourage you to talk to your physician and understand all the things. And don't don't go to conspiracy TV. I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, stop filling my inboxes with, amen, these loose conspiracies that you can't find any information to back up and to, you know, stop sending me these deep space kind of things. You know, trust me, y'all. Um, you know, I've been vaccinated. I feel fine. You know, I, I don't have any just... Use wisdom. I'm not telling you what to do. Y'all got the Holy Ghost as we talked about tonight. Let him lead and guide you. Amen. But I just care. I want as many of us, amen, to be preserved. I want as many of us to be healthy as possible. And um, I certainly don't want to lose anyone, amen, uh, uh, prematurely when there was an opportunity for us, amen, to receive, amen, um, what is available to us, all right? Um, we got it for measles, got it for mumps, got it for, you know, uh, all the tests and the shots and stuff, going to school. Um, we've been all right. You know, I know we're going to be okay. And uh, if we're going to have faith, let's have faith. But I'm encouraging you all, talk to a physician, you know, um, go to an unbiased news source to get your information about it. Um, this is not a, a, you know, you are not going to hell because you got the vaccine. I said it, said it, you know. Um, so stop, stop all that using the triggers to, to, you know, it's not a lack of faith thing. You have to have faith in God either way. He is the God of all medicine. He is Jehovah, uh, uh, Rofa. Amen. He is the God, amen, that healeth. I mean, he is our bomb. And so, amen, have faith, have confidence, use wisdom, talk to your, amen, uh, uh, your medical professional. Um, but I, let's not be afraid of this thing, amen. If this thing can help save, amen, anyone, there's more people, amen, who are living with it uh, than are people who are dying without it. So um, I'm just, we have to make that appeal. I would not be, amen, a, um, I would not be, amen, a responsible leader if I did not encourage, amen, uh, you all to consider it, for you to pray about it, amen, and for you to do the best you can to protect your families, all right? Um, I'm going to heaven, so I mean, and and I hope that you'll be there with me, amen? Uh, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, amen, <laughs> amen, so a seed even right now, if you're blessed by tonight's Bible class, amen, so a seed, amen, Zale, Cash App, PayPal, amen, um, uh, you can send it to our corporate address, 4936 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles, California. Every seat helps. We want to encourage everybody to give. Amen. Uh, do the right thing. Let's give, saints. Let's give. Amen. We can't hide from God. He knows what we have. Amen. And we're blessed by the word of God. We know we sow into the kingdom of God. Uh, we believe God. Amen. We we give because that's what we've been charged to do. Amen. Freely has he given unto us, and so freely do we give back to him. Amen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus and a part of your sin, waste not 
not another day. You can be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gifts of the Holy Ghost before it's everlasting too late. Make a decision. Marvel not, saints. You must be born again. Marvel not, woman, boy, or girl. Who should ever come to this broadcast? Wherever you may be, literally on the, on the globe. Amen. You must be born of water and of spirit. You must be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Neither is our salvation uh, given any other name whereby we must be saved. Amen. So in times like these, we have to hold fast to our faith in God's word and believe in the plan of salvation. Amen. You must, amen, be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. We cannot just shake your hand and welcome you in. Amen. It ain't my heaven. It ain't my rules. Amen. We're going by the word of God. Amen. As it was expressed on the day of Pentecost, what the plan of salvation is. Amen. To repent be baptized, amen, and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we're believing God that he will do it for us even right now. Amen. Uh, shall we pray, Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for tonight's Bible class. We thank you for all those who are listening. We pray for healing in the land. Send healing right now. Send deliverance and grace right now. I pray that this word would strengthen your people for such a time as this, O oh God. Wherever they may be, wherever they may be facing, O oh God, let them be evidence, O oh God, that the Holy Ghost power is the power of God to help them overcome temptation, to help them overcome uh, the challenges and the things that they're, amen, uh, dealing with even right now. I'm praying, O oh God, for salvation to come to homes. I'm praying that you would strengthen, amen, the life of the believer, the hand of the believer. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you would grant solace and peace and that you would grant victory, O oh God, even right now in the name of Jesus. We're looking forward, O oh God, to see you do your greatest saving for such a time as this. Uh, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. For you are good and for your mercy and do it forever. And there is nobody like you nowhere, O oh God. We honor you. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We have myself, my wife, Lady Shorter, the entire Bethesda Temple Church family, the kids, amen. Uh, we love the love of Christ Jesus. May the grace of God go with you, and may you continue being evidence of the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen. Even as we go, I am evidence. I am evidence, amen. Uh, no challenge, no temptation, no desert, no storm, no rain, amen, can stop God, amen, from being maximized in my life. I'm evidence. Are you evidence? God bless you. Take care. Peace.